What's up guys, my name is Preston Palmer, Student Engineering, where my goal is to help engineering students like me better understand concepts of engineering. And in this video, we're going over equilibrium equations. So I'm super pumped to talk about equilibrium equations with you guys. They are a super powerful concept, but they're really simple and you use them all the time in statics and in other engineering classes that you're going to take. So an object in equilibrium is an object where the sum of the forces acting on that object equals zero. So that means that the object is either not moving or it's moving at a constant velocity. And we're not going to get much into that in statics, but you'll deal more with that in physics. But an object that is not moving, or in other words, a static, is often what we'll be dealing with in engineering. So like I said, an object that is in equilibrium has the sum of the forces on the object equal to zero. And that means that the forces acting in the x, y, and z directions are also equal to zero. So we can say the sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero. The sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. And the sum of the forces in the z direction equals zero. So that's basically it guys. There's not much else to it than that and really the hard part comes in when you're setting up these equations. And even then it's not too difficult. But this is the foundation of a lot of what you'll do in statics. And so with that said, let's do an example problem. All right, so here we have a problem where we have a beam that is hanging from a cable suspended by a hook coming out from the wall. So what we need to find is the shortest length that this cable can be. And what we're given is that the beam weighs 700 pounds and the maximum tension that these cables can support is 1,500 pounds. So what we need to solve for is the shortest length that this cable can be without it breaking. So the first step we need to do to solve this problem, and the first step in a lot of problems that you're going to do in engineering, is to set up a free body diagram. So we're going to draw all the forces acting on this beam, and that will better help us understand what we're solving for and how we can do that. So we'll have a simplified version of the beam here. And we know because its center of gravity is in its center, the weight of the beam is going to be pulling down from there, and it is 700 pounds. So we're going to have a force coming down 700 pounds, and we're going to have a force in the cables coming up from the edges, and they're both going to be at an angle theta. And so because we're given that the cable the maximum tension in the cable is 1,500 pounds, we're going to know that we want the tension in the cable to be 1,500 pounds to be able to have the shortest length of the cable possible. So we're going to label these as being 1,500 pounds each because each side of this is pulling with 1,500 pounds of force. You might be tempted to split that in half and say it's just pulling with 750 pounds, but the tension in the cable is going to be the same everywhere throughout the cable. So each of these is 1,500 pounds. So our next step is we need to set up our equilibrium equations. So let's start with the sum of the forces in the x direction. And they're going to equal to zero. And we can see that the force of the weight of the beam is not going at all in the x direction, so we don't need to worry about that. But these cables are pulling, both pulling in the x direction. And so we can say that the force along in the x direction of this, we can represent that by cosine of theta equals the force in the x direction divided by the hypotenuse, which is 1,500 pounds. We multiply the 1,500 pounds over, we get that that force is 1500 
times by the cosine of theta for that side because it's acting in the positive x direction. So we have our coordinate system where this is our x direction and that's our y direction. Should have drawn that with our free body diagram. But this force is acting in the negative x direction, so we'll do minus 1500 cosine of theta because it is exactly the same. The angles are the same, and you'll do cosine to get this side or that component of the force. So what you'll notice here is these two are the exact same, so they'll cancel each other out. And that doesn't really help us solve the, our problem that we're looking for. So we're going to do the sum of the forces in the y direction. They're going to equal to zero, and that's going to equal, we have our two forces from the cables pulling up and our weight of the beam pulling down. So you know using our triangle again that we've set up, it's going to be 1500 times the sine of theta is our y component of the force of these cables. So we have 1500 sine of theta plus the other side is also going in the positive y direction. So we have 1500 sine of theta. I'm going to erase this. Minus, because 700 pounds is going in the negative y direction, 700 pounds. And we're going to solve that out. We can see because these two angles are going to be the same, we can combine this to be 3,000 sine of theta, and we'll add the 700 pounds over to this side of the, of the equation. So it'll be 700 equals 3,000 sine of theta. We can divide the 3,000 over and take the inverse sine or the arc sine of both sides, and then we'll get that theta equals the arc sine, and this will simplify to be 7 divided by 30. You plug that into your calculator, the arc sine of 7 divided by 30, that's going to get you 13.5 degrees. So each of these angles is going to be 13.5 degrees. So we've solved for that angle, but that doesn't give us our answer yet. We need to use that to solve for the triangle that we've created here between the cable and the beam. So that's our next step, is to solve for the length of each of these sides of the cable using the angles that we found. So we have our, ang we have our triangle here, and we know that this side is 10 feet. So we'll label that 10 feet. These two angles are each 13.5 degrees. And we know that since the degrees of a triangle add up to 180, we can do 180 minus 13.5 times by 2, because there's two of those angles, we'll end up getting that this angle is 153 degrees. We can label that on our triangle. So now that we have all the angles in our triangle, and we have the length of the one side, we can use the law of sines to solve for the other two sides of the triangle. And because this is an isosceles triangle, or in other words, these two lengths of the triangle are the same, we know that these two sides of the triangle are the same. We only need to solve for one of them. And so remember that the law of sines gives us that one of these sides, we'll call it AB, because it's going from point A to point B. That side divided by the sine of the angle opposite of it, so 13.5, equals this side divided by the sine of that angle. So 10 divided by the sine of 153. So we'll multiply the sine of 13.5 over to this side, and we'll get that AB equals 10 times the sine of 13.5 times 
divided by the sine of 153. And you plug that into your calculator, you end up getting that that side is equal to 1 or to 5.142 feet. So that gives us half. We need to multiply that by 2 to get the whole length of that cable. So that multiplied by 2, you end up getting that the whole length is 10.28 feet. Alright guys, so that's how it's done. That's how you use equilibrium equations to solve a problem that you might be needing. If you want other example problems, I'm going to post more videos with different example problems, some more with 2D, and another one dealing with three-dimensional equilibrium equations. So that's it for this video. If you found it helpful, hit that like button. If you have any questions or suggestions on how I can improve my videos, leave them down in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe.